in politics, religion, philosophy, cultural relations, literature, and as I'll go to um, explain this evening, the visual arts. In human, our first thoughts are likely to turn to the aspect of Darwin's research, which, he has, which has had the most profound impact on our understanding of where we come from and what made us who we are. And that is his theory of evolution by natural selection, or, or what he liked to call descent with modification, which he published in the, the what Mark rightly calls the bombshell book of in, in 1859 as On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection of the Preservation of Favored Races in the Strong Economy. Now, to remind ourselves, Darwin's theory proposed that the fittest individual organisms, uh, that is, those with characteristics best suited to their environment, are more likely to survive and to reproduce. They pass on these desirable characteristics to their offspring, and these features gradually become more common, sometimes giving rise to completely new species. What's notably missing from his evolutionary account was any reference to the, to the intervention of a divine creator, something that not a few contemporaries found troubling and even sacrilegious, and many still do today, as you know. Given the furore it provoked on these grounds, it's important to note that an entire text of, of Origin Species, which Darwin calls his long argument, he refers to the origin of man only once, and that's a sort of throwaway comment at the end of the book. In the distant future, he wrote, light will be thrown on the origin of man and his history. That's it. <laughs> Nevertheless, the theory, the, the inferences of the theory for, for man were clear and shocking to many of his contemporaries and provoked what the evolutionary biologist Steve Jones has called the biggest stink of the 19th century. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, channel. There, a number of prominent scientists shared Darwin's belief that sexual selection was the only hypothesis that had fully accounted for the presence of beauty in the natural world. Of these, many, such as the Parisian policeman and anthropologist, Alphonse Bertillon, who you see on the left, who's best known for creating the system of anthropometry, so, so to, to identify um, offended, repeat offended criminals, and then uh, Clémence Royer, who you see on the right, a philosopher and scientist with a keen interest in women's issues, and uh, who in fact um, uh, translated Darwin's origin into French. Um, and she was actually, because of that, she was largely responsible for the strongly materialist and by implication uh, uh, atheist and anti-clerical associations that colored Darwin's reception in France because she um, gave Darwin's text a markedly anti-religious toto that Darwin would be careful to avoid in English. In English. Another member, or they, both of these people were members of the Society of Anthropology. Another member known to be a hard Darwinist was this man, the embryologist, uh, Dr. Matthias de Duval. And it's thanks to him that Darwin's ideas permeated the very core of the artistic establishment in France because when he was appointed to the position of Professor of Anatomy at the École des Beaux-Arts in 1873, um, one of Darwin's first accounts was to add Darwin's new, uh, sorry, one of Duval's first actions was to add Darwin's newly translated book, The Descent of Man, um, which you see in French on the right, Les Sentences de l'Homme. Um, and as a result of this, Darwin's ideas, notably those in beauty, were able to infiltrate official artic, uh, artistic training at powerful state-sanctioned levels, the Ecole des Beaux-Arts being, of course, the most esteemed artistic training around in France at the end of the 19th century. Now, if on the face of it these debates seem remote from the light-infused canvases of the French Impressionists, we should perhaps think again, because it's precisely uh, these painters' interests in exploring the complexities of the perceptual experience of nature that aligns them to Darwin, although, of course, in their case, they have the additional channel, the challenge of reproducing their impressions in paint. Like Darwin, they were labeled by hostile critics as materialist, um, a term, again, that Ruskin could use to describe Darwin. And with the connotations implicit in the, in the latter's earlier comments, um, that is, signifying an approach that was anarchic and godless. We've spent 
um, demonstrates one of Paul Williams' sort of slightly, slightly madder theories about line and color. The idea that, that um, movements upwards and towards the right, as well as the colors red and orange and yellow, were pleasurable, while movements downwards and toward the left, and green, blue, and violet were inhibitory or sad. So, public and critics alike. <laughs>